One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Here coming today with the easy kid song Mary Had a Little Lamb. We're gonna learn this song in three keys. What we're gonna do with this lesson is try and answer a question I get a lot is one, when I'm in a bluegrass jam and someone throws me a song I've never heard of, where do I start to look for that melody, right? If I just have the entire fretboard to look at, it's pretty overwhelming, right? So what we're gonna do for with this lesson is start to figure out how do we narrow down where that melody might be? So we're gonna talk about the concept of chord tones and passing tones, which is gonna allow us to narrow down where to look for the melody of a new song that we never heard. And the other question I get a lot is, how do I move a song into a new key? Maybe I learned a cool solo in the key of G, but the jam I go to plays it in the key of D or the key of C, right? And this is a very common thing that will happen a lot. And we need a toolbox for how do we take a simple melody and move it to a new key. So those are gonna be the important concepts behind this Mary Had a Little Lamb lesson, right? We're just using Mary Had a Little Lamb as a vehicle to study those two concepts. You're probably not gonna to go to a jam and call Mary Had a Little Lamb, but this is a really good melody to break down those two concepts. We've got three solos. We're gonna learn it in G, C, and D, a simple melody, and then the bluegrass style for each one. We'll break it all down. All right, enough talking, let's jump into it. Here's the beginner lesson for Mary Had a Little Lamb. Here we go. All right, so let's jump into this first basic melody in the key of G. So let's play the first four measures, and then we'll start talking about some of the important concepts in this lesson. All right, here we go. times I'll do it really slow one more time okay so we're gonna start with the open second string our open B string and then we're gonna play the second fret on the third string. And then the open third string, so take your finger off. And then put it right back down on that second fret on the third string again. So we have four notes, four quarter notes. One, two, three, four. The other way that would be good to practice is just to recognize that this open B string is also this fourth fret on the third string here. Try it that way too. Just good to know both versions, okay? And then we actually hit the second string, open second string three times in a row. One, two, three, four. So two quarter notes and then a half note. So not too hard, just play that open second string three times. So let's put those first two measures together. Not too hard, we have. Measure three, put your middle finger back down on the second fret of the third string. Now we're gonna be playing over a D chord. Now we're gonna be playing over a D chord, and we're gonna play the second fret on the third string three times with that same rhythm. One, two, three, four. And then 
to end the phrase, then we go back up to the open second string. And then play the third fret on the second string with your uh, third finger, your ring finger. Same timing. One, two, three, four. So we're using that same rhythm in measures two, three, and four. Okay, let's play that top measure and then we'll start breaking down where we're finding this melody. All right, so where's that melody coming from? It's coming from our major scale, G major scale. Okay, or if you go down another, the rest of the octave. Okay, so that's the first thing a lot of beginners think of is that, oh, I'll just play from that major scale but it's actually not really gonna narrow it down enough. We can actually narrow it down a, quite a bit further than that, so we'll actually know where to look for the melody. Okay, so those notes are coming from the major scale, but we can actually get quite a bit more specific with, than that with just a little bit of music theory. So if we understand the concept of chord tones and passing tones, it's actually gonna help us find the melody a lot easier, okay? So the concept of chord tones and passing tones are, Chord tones are just notes that make up the chord that you're playing. So if you're playing a G chord, there's three notes that make up that chord, okay? In this case, it's G, B, and D, okay? You don't necessarily have to remember those notes, although it would be helpful. So if you play a G chord, this chord is just a combination of those three notes, G, B, and D. Sometimes you'll have more than, you'll, you'll, you might have two Gs, two Ds and a B. Again, there's different variations on those notes, but any G major chord is going to be made up of those three notes. Okay, so even if you do it with this like this, or do it like that, with, or this way, right? You're just playing those three notes. G, B, D, then we have another G, and then we have, in this case, if you're doing like the bluegrass G, you have a D and a G. Again, so we're just using those three notes. Those are called the chord tones. If you play it here, same thing. So anytime you're playing a G chord anywhere on the neck, you're playing those three notes, G, B, and D. Those are our chord tones, okay? And then the other notes in the scale are called passing tones. So, so you have a chord tone, passing tone, chord tone, B, then a passing tone, chord tone, D, passing tone, passing tone, chord tone. Go up again, chord tone starting on the root, passing tone, chord tone, passing tone, chord tone, passing tone, passing tone, chord tone. Okay? So I don't necessarily expect you to remember all this right away, but just the underlying concept is important that we have chord tones and passing tones. And then the, the important thing to remember is that chord tones are gonna to be stronger melody notes. So most common melodies are gonna be made up of mainly chord tones kind of connected with passing tones. So that's all you really need to remember. You have chord tones, the notes that make up the chord, and that's where the melody is mainly gonna come from. So I'm not just gonna look randomly in the scale, because that's not gonna give me enough specificity. If I start highlighting the chord tones and then connecting then with passing tones, you'll start to hear a little melody. So something like this. So again, I'm using a series of chord tones. Chord tone, passing tone, chord tone. So I'm using a series of chord tones. Passing tone, chord tone. So it doesn't necessarily matter what you play, but if you highlight those chord tones and then connect them with passing tones, that's where our melody is mainly gonna come from. So example, in the key of G, if I was playing a song I've never heard before, I'm gonna start my solo on one of those chord tones. So I'm either gonna walk in, something like that maybe, or, or, I'm just walking into each of those chord tones, G, B, and D, that we just talked about. So again, if you can remember that concept that melodies are mainly gonna be chord tones connected with passing tones, that's gonna allow you to narrow down where you're looking for the melody. 
Now you're not just looking all over the fretboard, you can look to start on one of those chord tones. You actually have a 33% chance of guessing the right chord tone if you just pick one of them randomly when you're playing a song you've never heard before, which is pretty good odds. The other thing is if you hit the, a different one, you're still gonna be playing a, a harmony kind of solo that works, okay? So that's what we wanna remember, okay? So let's look back now at our melody of Mary Had a Little Lamb. So we can see how we're using chord tone, passing tone, chord tone, passing tone, and then three chord tones in a row. So you can see how the melody starts on a chord tone, then goes to a passing tone, chord tone, passing tone, and then three chord tones in a row, right? So again, you're, you're having a very strong connection to that key of G, the chord we're playing, Watch if I just play other notes in the scale, right? If I just pick random notes in the scale, it's not necessarily gonna sound like it's in the key of G. Listen to this. So if I go like something like. Right, so I picked notes in that G major scale, but I wasn't highlighting chord tones. I was highlighting kind of the passing tones. someone was strumming G there, that, that's, that solo would kind of sound out of the box. It wouldn't really sound like it's connected to the chords we're playing. Even though those notes are in the scale, I'm just not highlighting the chord tones, right? So that's what you want to remember. And then right here, the chord actually changes to D. So the other thing you need to remember is that when the chords change, the chord tones also change, right? So if in D, now I have new chord tones, my notes that make up a D chord. In this case, you'll see that our melody becomes this note here, which is in my D chord. That's why that's a very strong note to play over a D chord, it's a chord tone. So I'm playing that note three times. Doesn't matter if I do it with a different finger, right? It's the same note. And then I go back to G and I'm back to chord tones. So again, you can see how when I change to my D chord, I go to this note. It's also in the scale of G, but now I'm highlighting that chord tone to D so your ear is gonna hear that change. And then when I go back to G, now I highlight the chord tones of G again and you're gonna hear that. So the melody is actually implying that those chords are changing there, which is, very powerful to connect the melody to the chords, okay? So that's what we're doing there. And then the second half we go. So you just hit that, uh, starts the same way. And now right here we just hit the open uh, second string four times. Now we have a little ending lick. So this is an important little phrase back to our concept of passing tones and melody notes, right? The chord changes in measure seven to D. So this becomes our chord tone. Now this open second string that was a chord tone in G, now in D becomes a passing tone. Because we're still using our notes from our G scale when we play over D. But the chord tones and passing tones change, right? So again, in measure six, the open second string over a G chord is a chord tone. When we go to D, it becomes a passing tone. So then we have chord tone, chord tone, passing tone, chord tone, back to a chord tone because we're going back to G. Okay, so like I said, I'm definitely not expecting you to remember all this right away. Kind of digest this slowly. It, big important concept, our chord tones are stronger for melody than passing tones. Chord tones are the notes that build the chord that we're playing. So if the band is playing a G chord, again, it makes sense if you think about it, that the melody, a strong melody would be those notes that make up that chord. Instead of just strumming them, now we're just playing each of those notes individually. So it makes sense that those would be really strong melody notes.